Hi there. Today we'll be looking at the context of Shakespeare's Macbeth. In your exam responses, some marks are allocated for AO3, a student's ability to bring in relevant, contextual information. First performed in 1606, Macbeth remains one of Shakespeare's most widely acclaimed plays. A tale of the destructive power of fate, infused with the themes of the supernatural and violence, the Scottish play, as it is referred to in acting circles, is a prime example of Shakespearean tragedy. In this video, we will delve into the context of the play. We will start with a brief biography of Shakespeare himself, a look at the historical context of the play, and finally, consider theatre in the Jacobean age. So grab a pen, grab some paper, and strap in for a concise summary of the contextual factors that you need to know. Despite being the most famous playwright of all time, surprisingly little is actually known about Shakespeare. However, some information has been gleaned from church documents and legal records. William Shakespeare was born in Stratford-upon-Avon in 1564. He was the third child and eldest son of John Shakespeare and Mary Arden. The consensus among scholars is that he attended the local grammar school in Stratford, on leaving, he married Anne Hathaway, with whom he was to have three children. After the birth of his last two children, he seemingly disappeared from all documentation until 1592, in what are referred to as his lost years. By 1594, he had established himself as an actor and playwright in London. He landed a writing position with Lord Chamberlain's men, which became the King's men on James I's accession and it was no doubt that this was one of the most successful theatre companies of the time. By the time of his death in 1616, he had amassed a staggering 37 plays, a string of some 154 sonnets and two longer poems, Venus and Adonis and The Rape of Lucrece. His plays are usually categorised as such, comedies, histories, late romances and tragedies. With Shakespeare's plays, Macbeth in particular, it is vitally important to appreciate the time in which they were written. Shakespeare worked on the play between 1605 and 1606, shortly after the death of Elizabeth I and into the reign of subsequent monarch King James I. The Barnes Theatre Company, The King's Men, regularly performed at court for private audiences, including the King himself. There is a great deal in the play to suggest Macbeth was written with the King in mind. It deals with his direct ancestry through Banquo's line and the recurring references to witchcraft were of particular interest to the king, who published his own thoughts on the subject in his 1597 volume, Demonology. The play also centres around the issue of just kingship. It is a play which serves to illustrate the dangers of regicide, the killing of a king. James I underwent regicide attempts of his own. The first came in 1600, while he was King of Scotland, but not yet of England. He was the subject of a plot conceived by the Earl of Gowry and his brother. The second came in the shape of the famous 1605 gunpowder plot. This attempt on the King's life arose from mounting religious turmoil, which was present through this period. A band of Catholics were not best pleased when the Protestant monarch issued a series of laws targeted at persecuting the Catholic population of England. The plan was eventually foiled when Guy Fawkes was found in the basement of the Palace of Whitehall, surrounded by barrels upon barrels of gunpowder. His conspirators were rounded up, tried in court, and after they were found guilty of treason, executed on the 30th of January 1606. This event, in particular, is alluded to in Act 2, Scene 3, when the drunken porter hears an imaginary visitor knocking as an equivocator. Equivocation is the use of ambiguous language to conceal the truth. It is said to be a reference to the gunpowder conspirator Father Garnet, who famously used this equivocation while under oath in his testimony to escape the death penalty. Though this detail may appear somewhat obscure to modern audiences, contemporary ones would have immediately recognised it as a jive at growing Catholic unrest. A theme which runs throughout the play is that of witchcraft and the supernatural. Medieval Scotland, along with most other European nations, firmly believed in the practice of witchcraft. 
Witches who could make prophecies and control human affairs were seen to be in cahoots with the devil, and as such a threat to society. King James I stressed on many occasions the need to eradicate witchcraft from English soil. An important factor in the historical backdrop of the play was the question of religion. The nature of the religious unrest at the time stemmed from the Tudor monarch Henry VIII, who famously broke with Rome in 1534. This constituted a move towards England as a Protestant nation and continued by the rulers which followed. Shakespeare wrote formally under the Protestant Queen Elizabeth I and latterly King James I of the same denomination. However, there was still a sizeable number of believers and clergymen who clung to their Catholic faith, resulting in many of their executions throughout the 16th and 17th centuries. For our study of the play, we must consider how this religious backdrop of England would impact the contemporary reception of the play. What this boils down to is the fact that the deeply religious audiences would have had an unwavering faith in the existence of heaven and hell. The actions of Macbeth throughout the play would have guaranteed his eternal condemnation. Shakespeare's audiences would also believe in the great chain of being. This was the notion that every creature and element in nature has its own place in the chain of life as prescribed by God. It began with God at the top of the hierarchy, descending through angels, saints, kings, nobles, right down to peasants, then animals, from the mighty lion through trees and plant life, and finally to lowly rocks and minerals. It was believed that as long as this natural order was preserved, the state could function harmoniously. However, if it was disturbed, such as by Macbeth's act of regicide, then the chain would break and chaos would ensue. Linked to the belief in the great chain of being was that of the divine right of kings. This was the affirmation that each king was appointed by God to act as his representative on earth. Therefore, Macbeth's murder of Duncan can be seen as a crime against God himself. Understanding the intricacies of Elizabethan and Jacobean theatre is critical in understanding any of Shakespeare's plays fully. Shakespeare was writing at a time in which theatre was flourishing in London. At the turn of the 16th century, theatre was emerging as the most popular form of entertainment. Until 1576, dramatic performances had been held in private courts. However, in that year, the first London theatre was erected in Shoreditch by owner James Burbage, simply named The Theatre. After the 21-year lease of the land ended, Burbage had the building dismantled and reconstructed on Bankside in Southwark under the new name of The Globe. While London boasted an array of theatres like The Rose, The Curtain and The Fortune, it was The Globe which excited the greatest interest among theatre-goers across the capital. It was home to the revered company for whom Shakespeare wrote and acted, Lord Chamberlain's Men. Such was the arrangement that Shakespeare was entitled to 10% of all proceeds as a shareholder in the company, which formed the basis of his own personal wealth. While it is Shakespeare's name who finds itself ensconced on theatre programmes and school curricula across the country, he was by no means the only dramatist of his time. The rise of the theatre and the promise of financial reward saw a surge in playwrights. Notably, Ben Jonson, Thomas Kidd, George Chapman, Thomas Middleton and most famously perhaps, Christopher Marlowe. Many started life as actors who then underwent theatrical apprenticeships before penning plays of their own. In a time before copywriting and licensing, many decided against publishing their works for fears that others would plagiarise their material to their own financial ends. It is also important to be aware of the style of the theatres in this period, a topic which I think we'll cover in a later video. In summary, Macbeth is very much a product of the time in which it was written. For that reason, it is vital that you are aware of the historical context. The play bears many features which prove Shakespeare's own allegiance to the king in a time of intense doubts about the legitimacy of the monarch. Shakespeare also plays on the fears and dictates of the time. 
His portrayal of witchcraft and the supernatural would have incited terror into the devout audiences of the time. In exploiting the great chain of being and having the eponymous character challenge the divine right of kings, Shakespeare was able to manipulate contemporary audiences into drawing the pro-monarchy subtext of the play. At this point in history, Shakespeare was part of a thriving dramatic scene among an extensive body of other playwrights. And I think that just about wraps it up. Thank you for watching and be sure to check out the other videos that I've put together on Macbeth.